This will be just a quick overview of the urinary system and renal function, starting with blood flow. As this blood comes down the abdominal aorta, this oxygenated but unfiltered blood will enter the renal artery. In later videos, you'll see that this renal artery leads into a series of arteries that make their way to the functional unit of the kidney known as the nephron. The nephron is where urine will actually be formed. The blood then, now filtered but deoxygenated, will leave the kidney through the renal vein, entering the inferior vena cava and making its way back to the heart. If we look at the sectional view of the kidney, you can see the outer third of the kidney is called the cortex, the renal cortex or cortical region. Cortex means bark. The inner two-thirds is known as the renal medulla. This medullary region is made up of renal pyramids, you see indicated here. The human kidney averages six to 18 of these structures. Each renal pyramid terminates at a structure called the renal papilla. That papilla will now dump the formed urine into a structure called the minor calyx. Each renal pyramid has its own minor calyx. Each minor calyx will then come together and form larger major calyxes. The major calyxes will then come together to form a renal pelvis. The urine coming from each of these calyxes will empty into the pelvis. The pelvis will then empty into the ureters. Right? You have one ureter per kidney. So we have bilateral kidneys, bilateral ureters. The ureters will convey the urine down to this muscular sac called the urinary bladder. The urinary bladder is lined with a specialized epithelium called transitional epithelium, which is highly elastic. It allows for distensibility, and the urinary bladder is a very distensible organ, gaining two to three times its size when full. At the floor of the urinary bladder, you'll see this triangular outline called the trigone. Its boundaries are laterally, where the two ureters enter, and inferiorly, where the urethra leaves the bladder. Right here at the floor of the trigone, we have an internal urethral sphincter. This is governed by your autonomic nervous system. It is under involuntary control. When it relaxes and opens, urine will begin to flow through the prosthetic urethra, given its name because this segment of the urethra passes right through the male prostate. This is obviously then representative of a male urinary system.